Jet pack compose today and how you can integrate it in your existing project. I assume uh, you not everyone have like latest project and a lot of of you are working on a project that uh, started in uh, 12 17 or 12 18 and they are a bit legacy according to new jetpack compose and you may face some similar issues that we faced uh, during our initial investigation how we can migrate our existing project to jetpack compose so let's start uh, today's agenda is just five points not so big agenda but still uh, first it's it will be about advantages and disadvantages of jetpack compose uh, troubles during integration uh, some possible ways for jetpack compose integration and of course exam examples because they are fun and useful uh, to ramp up your migration. So let's talk about pros and cons. Uh, pros, you don't need any XML. It reduces a lot of your boilerplate code as uh, I assume you have a lot of result reviews, a lot of custom items in Resac reviews, so we just become an XML developer, not a mobile developer. And uh, a lot of XML codes that you have to support, uh, update some styles when uh, feature changes come and Jetpack Compose solves these problems. You don't need XML, you write everything in your code and Person Gucci. Uh, also, Jetpack Compose reduces time to market because you don't need to write uh, every item for reviews, add XML, everything is like six liners, even less. In, and But Jetpack Compose have like disadvantages is adoption. Uh, your team uh, needs to change mindset if they didn't work with Flutter uh, to write in Jetpack Compose because Jetpack Compose uh, declarative way is inspired by Flutter. Everything is function and you compose these functions together to make UI. Uh, and um, first, uh, uh, first thing uh, during integration was troubles between uh, Jetpack Compose compiler uh, version and Kotlin. Currently, we use 1.5.30, uh, but uh, initially Jetpack Compose uh, didn't support this version. Uh, but now uh, Jetpack Compose 1.2, 1.02, and it seems it already can work with 1.5.20, but still can't work with 1.5.30. So we either uh, uh, need to wait or just downgrade our Kotlin uh, version. So it's not a major problem, but it's a bit annoying issue. Uh, so also we have uh, some, uh, we have multi model uh, project and our uh, project has a lot of Java code uh, and uh, like around 20 or 23 percent Kotlin code and we need to rewrite almost everything to Java and if we want to like start fully migrating up because Kotlin uh, Jetpack Compose rely on Kotlin compiler uh, to transform some of their composable functions and they cannot be called from Java. 
Uh, so it's not bad as migration uh, from Java to Kotlin. Uh, most of the time, uh, just one uh, <laughs> action in Android Studio, but sometimes you need to manually fix this conversion. Uh, but also we use um, Binder, uh, we use our uh, service interface uh, that implements Binder interface. It means that it is bound service, um, but uh, surprisingly, Jetpack Compose work with this, and uh, we are happy initially. But uh, in our plans is to migrate fully to Cortin worlds, uh, to drop uh, even Eric Java, uh, because Coroutines is a preferred way in Compose world. And um, we need to uh, like to rewrite like half of the, our application, but it will be incrementally, and uh, it will not hurt our application. Uh, the second issue is we have a uh, callbacks uh, that deliver a result to our UI layer from uh, uh, service model. Uh, so we'll have to rewrite them as uh, coroutines and compose will not like work nicely with that approach. But in current approach, they work fine. Uh, also, Jitpa compose, uh, as I um, said earlier, in Java Kotlin. Uh, mixed code base is bad for compose integration. You need to have like single language code base uh, to maximize your Jetpack compose experience and reduce some uh, some potential issues that can arise because you can't call composable functions from Java and you can't write composable functions from Java in Java. So it's just Kotlin way. Uh, also, we face an issue with unit tests. Uh, Jetpack Compose unit tests are not unit tests anymore. They are UI tests. You need to have your emulator or virtual device in, in the cloud uh, to set up to run them on. So if you use your custom um, CI on bare bones server that runs somewhere in your local network, it's fine. But if you use some Firebase test lab as we do, you may face some um, additional costs because our uh, running time, it's not free on Firebase test lab. And running all this UI test during every pull request build, it's like waste of your money. Uh, and yeah, you, possible ways for smooth compose integration. Uh, Jetpack Compose uh, has a lot of inter inter interoperability tools uh, to integrate uh, Jetpack Compose into your existing code. First is Compose View. It's a uh, successor of uh, a child of abstract Compose View. It can be used for like any of your UI, uh, UI element like text view or button uh, to replace in your XML code. And uh, you just need to call this specific code in uh, in your activity or fragment uh, to add some styles like like this. You just find the ID your view and call a composable function to style your view. So uh, and that's why you need to write your code uh, that in Java to Kotlin because you will not be able to execute this piece of code in uh, Java. Uh, so also, if you have 
uh, I assume you can have some custom views like Lanier layouts, customs, like constraint layouts, custom. You can just uh, use Android view and uh, composable. And inside that, you can create new your custom view and uh, uh, integrate. So it will be like this. So you just have by chart view. Uh, you initialize your by chart view into in the Android factory, and then uh, your uh, code will be used in uh, Android uh, view in compose way. And uh, another big victory is uh, the address to recycle views. Jetpack Compose doesn't have this class anymore. And it relies on lazy column for vertical and lazy row for horizontal views. Also, there is vertical scroller is also a counterpart of uh, lazy column. But lazy column is more performant than uh, vertical scroller. Vertical scroller is just uh, counterpart of uh, scroll view. But if you need some uh, custom uh, view, like you had selective views, you must use lazy column or lazy row. If you have horizontal, you use lazy row. If you have vertical, you use lazy column. Uh, so the basic usage of uh, this new shiny UI is uh, this. You just have your items. If you have only strings, you just use like this. But if you have some custom views, you just add into without repeat, you can uh, just add into any item. You create item block, and in item block, you just write your composable fun function. Like you have header, so you just use header view, a next item, uh, use another view. But it seems in uh, 1.0.2, they deprecated uh, a parameter uh, items with uh, your data, so you, you, you must have different, like in your every item, you just uh, manually use your. Uh, views that you want. And uh, yeah, uh, as I said before, you don't need your XML. You just use composable, and it's better to group your composable function into like separate file, like composables kg. Uh, to have all composables in one place and not spread them around your project. But it's not like strict, but it's like somewhere someone recommends, some, someone don't recommend, so it's still debatable. Uh, also about navigation, uh, uh, luckily we have uh, more than like standard Android navigation. We don't use any Cicerone or any other third party library. We can simply like remove our old navigation and replace easily with new. But if you use Cicerone, you have to clean up your navigation and uh, introduce navigation in Jetpack way. So it will it would take much more much more time uh, than if you use uh, jetpack navigation with navigation graph but in both cases you need to delete your navigation graph because jetpack navigation uh, doesn't need any xml to navigate between your screens uh, so uh, it would uh, look like that. You have top bar, it's your navigation bar, but you, uh, 
uh, uh, what, not navigation bar, but your uh, toolbar, but you may not have toolbar, so you just omit this toolbar and you just have your bottom navigation bar that has, now you it has fragments, but in Compose world, it will have screens, not fragments. So uh, in our case, we have four fragments like current, upcoming, recipes, and more. And uh, we need to create some uh, data class that has a road, an icon, and like content description. And then we uh, compose everything in one and composable function like bottom navigation bar, as it includes items, uh, bottom navigation for composable function from Jetpack Compose, and uh, everything that you need to like fill your bottom navigation. And then you just use navigation, uh, create navigation composable that takes nav controller as argument. And inside it is nav host from Jetpack Compose Navigation and declares your composables that your screens. Uh, it feels uh, simpler than uh, with Jetpack Navigation as you don't need to create this navigation graph in your XML file and you have just co Kotlin file with your composables, and it's easier to support than with XML. So, and then you need to update your own click from this uh, piece of code and add actually navigation. So we use uh, the start destination as our first element. And then uh, we don't uh, want to uh, multiple copies of the same destination. So we use uh, launch single top to prevent this. And then if we combine everything together, our navigation, uh, our main screen will have such navigation and everything uh, will have uh, every item uh, will be here. So we'll need to create like four screens uh, for our application. So it's it's cool and it will remove a lot of Java code, a lot of Kotlin code and uh, introduce some new shiny code that is good. Uh, so, uh, Another uh, stuff is uh, you need to add some additional libraries like uh, accompanist if you want to have some functionality that Jetpack Compose doesn't have already. Like it, uh, from what I heard that Jetpack Compose doesn't uh, have some Glide adapters, coil adapters. So you need to add uh, a company is a tool that is being developed by Google. It's open source, and it provides some stuff like remember coil page, remember glide page to load your images into your image view. So if you have result reviews and you have horizontal items, uh, you need to add like a row. It's an element that may contain more than one element like text view, uh, image. And in image, you just declare like remember coil painter or remember glide painter to load image because default painter uh, take only your resource ID. Uh, so you need to add additional painters. Uh, so 
Uh, in conclusion, uh, uh, Jetpack Compose is very powerful, but it's still too early to uh, start integrating that if you are not if you are not brave, uh, because it's only 1.0.2 and uh, some uh, features may be changed, but it's still uh, production ready and you can use it in your uh, pro project, but it's still you can experiment with it. And I feel that uh, Jetpack Compose has bright feature in Android development. Uh, so, uh, um, let me, uh, one minute. If you, uh, if you have some question, you may uh, ask them, uh, if you, in any time you want. So there's question and answers. Uh, okay. uh, you can, I, I wanted to like share some, my like pet, uh, pet project with composers. I'm not sure that I can share uh, uh, production projects. So uh, oh. one minute. Oh, well, I have a few questions. Uh, first one is about the situation when sometimes we need to have different layouts uh, based on um, resource modifiers like uh, screen orientation or screen density, how it's gonna be handled in Jetpack Compose? Uh, in Jetpack Compose, it has like modifier uh, class that has like fill max switch, fill max height, also, it has modifier which modifier height it takes uh, uh, DP. Uh, I believe it handles resource density uh, under the hood. Uh, so, we, uh, do we need to create different compose views for uh, situations where we need completely different layouts? or it's going to be in the same uh, class, or? Uh, do you mean a different layout for your recycler view? Uh, I mean uh, different layout for everything, like uh, in landscape orientation, we maybe need completely different layout. Not, uh, so, not only with positions of view, but also with uh, also, we maybe need to have a different set of views. Uh, yeah, you can like create your composable function like and uh, uh, use local configuration. It's from Jetpack Compose local configuration class. Uh, it has uh, current field, and then you can check in when if you and if your con configuration like landscape, you just one uh, element. But if not landscape, you use different elements. So you you need to make uh, two different composable function: one for landscape, one for portrait. Okay, uh, the second question is about performance. Uh, maybe you have did some measurements about the speed. Uh, is it really faster than just inflating layout from uh, resource files? Uh, it's always the same, but uh, one thing is slower is compile time. Compile time is slower than uh, like traditional Android development. Okay, thank you. Also, if you want to observe your orientation, uh, you need you have like a lazy initialization like by remember and use mutable state of. And if uh, 
and also you can use like effects and uh, observe this orientation and when orientation changes you just uh, in your van you just use proper UI for different orientation change. Okay, um, I, have, I have some questions to yeah. keep in mind. Uh, so first of all, uh, do you have, uh, well, do Agit Pack Compose uh, has some uh, alternatives like uh, stateless widgets and stateful widgets uh, like it has, uh, like Flutter has. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is there are some lightweight widgets and uh, how the state management is uh, handled by the developer? Does uh, Jetpack Compose has some third party libraries like uh, provider and uh, block mm, or something like that? By default, all these composable are stateless. And you can uh, manage your state, you have mutable state of you uh, you you have remember uh, it's like delegated property and you can handle it but i assume you also can include a companist in your project it has a lot of useful tools that jetpack and boss doesn't have yet so probably uh, a companist also has some additional state management. Okay, thanks. Uh, and uh, uh, let me share one uh, more time. Share screen, uh, window, Chrome tab. And uh, do you see my screen? Yes. Uh, it's like uh, a pet project that I'm doing like in my free time. It's a simple uh, cryptocurrency exchange tracker. It's based on CoinStat API. So it just listens to these changes and loads in uh, result reviews. So, uh i have uh, just one <laughs> list in my application so uh it's use uh, lazy column it's like view um using uh, padding between uh, this uh, we have padding values in jetpack compose that uh that their purpose is to manage paddings between uh, in the row so uh, also, it mimics it. It's a specific method that takes your uh, data set and uh, adds some uh, list items. And uh, here is also a simple navigation. So in Jetpack and Compose navigation, you can uh, uh, set a navigation. Uh, param like that like coin details slash id and uh, if you click on your list item it will start uh, like new activity with uh, uh, intent that will have uh, um, your item id in your extras so it's very useful and, and then uh, you have list item, as I said earlier, uh, if you have list items that has not only like one item, you can uh, use row. So modifier adds like 45 dB is device independent height. And then uh, it adds text to uh, also row that use image. I use uh, in my pet project uh, a companist that uses coil, not glide, but coil is uh, similar to glide. And to load image, you just need to make one line to load image. But 
uh, currently with Glide in Android development, you need to create this Glide adapter, add a lot of code just uh, to have possibility to download image in your future. So also image scaling is also easier. You don't need to use XML and add to your XML properties crop type. It just add one line and one line for your image size. So it's it's cool. Also, if you need to have spaces between your elements, you use spacer. Uh, it's just a compose a composable function. Also, it's recommended to use like state management in, the, in compose with suitable state flow, remember, and etc. So it makes life easier. Uh, so I don't have anything more uh, to share. If you have uh, some questions, uh, you may ask uh, 